he spoke about this and it didn't make sense to him because he's like, I did an advert for that time and the buyout was like $800,000 for a similar advert. Like the the buyouts for adverts back then were huge. Ted Danson... No, he was struggling for money. Ted, yeah, but well, yeah, but that doesn't matter. make he, sense. He, he was struggling for money. Well, but, but he did bad things. He made bad choices. He probably Fine, he made bad choices. Gambled it all away But I'm just saying, out of all of them, he's the one that was the richest, technically, if you think about it logically. And Steve Gutenberg, who's a cartoon artist, is the poorest. Because <laughs> what's he... <laughs> he's doing doodles. Unless he's syndicated in a newspaper. Or was that like a big job back in the day? They all seem, apart from acting, they both seem like weird jobs nowadays. What, an architect? Yeah, architects don't exist anymore. Computers do that. Somebody's still got to press the buttons. Though. Mate, everything's a box now. It's a box or a pickle. Nobody's building this, you know, nobody's building that big Barcelona church that's never mm. done. Pretty sure they're just builders faffing about. <laughs> Back to that subject. Oh, sorry, I've been locked in the loft. <laughs> 700 years they've been building that spire. Like, it's gone been... their budget again, sorry. They've been locked in the loft again. Mm-hmm. Um, three men and a baby, that was a lot of chat about three men and a baby. Yeah, we should really go on. <laughs> Here's Peter Gabriel on <laughs> Sledge.
installment, when he's not fighting the Predator, this actor is a witness to the angels in the outfield. But he turns the color purple after getting lifted for possession of at least four lethal weapons. <laughs> hey, Reeves, I'm getting too old for this bit, but I'm not too old to talk about Danny Glover tonight. Hollywood's weird. <laughs> That introduction, I'm going to call it professional. That professional introduction means it's time for your favourite segment of the show, Hollywood Swingers, where we celebrate a Hollywood movie star who's made a swing into music. This week, it is acting legend, Danny Glover. Yep, Paul, Danny Glover. Da, 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 da. Tell me about him, Paul. Danny Glover, mm-hmm. born the 22nd of July, 1946. Uh, it was a Monday. Do you want to know his star sign? Yes, please. It was a cancer. <gasps> Uh, he was born in San Francisco, California, to postal workers Carrie and James, both of whom were very active and advanced in equal rights. They worked with the NCAAP. Yeah, yeah. Uh, as they were also heavily into the old socialism. They even got married on the day of the Cuban Revolution. Okay. Not to skip ahead, because I, I won't talk about it much later on, but Glover would become actual pals with Fidel Castro decades later. Ooh. Very much... And you know, since we are talking Big about into the unions and socialism, since we are talking about like jump scares, mm. Fidel Castro loved hiding in cupboards and jumping out at people. Did he? Yeah, yeah, facts. There you go. It's one of his favourite things. I mean, other than it was the people who <laughs> were hiding in the cupboards to jump out at him, but always failed. Oh, it was the real story. Uh, Glover grew up suffering with epilepsy. Oh, uh, so did although I. Although his seizure stopped when he was around thirty-five years That's... old. Wild. Yeah. I had epilepsy and then they just stopped all Mm -hmm. of a sudden. Uh, He also had dyslexia growing up. But following school, he attended the University of uh, San Francisco uh, to study economics, where he became interested in many sort of community issues, including things like urban renewal and gentrification. (sighs) Whilst there, he took part in a five-month-long strike at the university. It was the longest walkout in US history that saw the establishment of the country's first ever college of ethnic studies. <sighs> he then began a career as a city administrator and he was helping with many of the sort of planning projects. Danny Clover? Yeah, for like five years. He used to <coughs> help like renters with their issues and stuff like that. So he was heavily, heavily involved with all these like public programmes. So this is a true man of the people? Yeah, very much into it. In fact, it wasn't until he was nearly 30 that he took up acting, he attended a regional training programme before deciding, I'm going to do this full time. (gasps) So he quit his job and eventually moved to LA to try and make it there. And he must have hated LA. Oh, he must, he must. But his first film role came in 1979. It was a small role as one of the inmates in the Clint Eastwood thriller Escape from Alcatraz. So he was. Though he would also appear in episodes of TV shows, including BJ and the Bear, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the Greatest American Hero. Yep. And he had a four-episode run on Hill Street Blues. I love Hill Street Blues. They yeah. always ended up back in that guy's hot tub. As well as a successful Broadway run in 1982's uh, Master Harold and the Boys, uh, the actor had a memorable turn as a travelling drifter alongside Sally Field in the 1984 Best Picture-nominated drama Places in the Heart. Do you know that Alcatraz means pelican? Is it? Yeah. There you go. Uh, 1985 saw the actor appear in a trio of critically acclaimed films. The first was the Harrison Ford crime thriller, Witness. He would play one of the corrupt cops who are trying to kill Kelly McGillis in it. Is Witness the one where Harrison Ford, everybody thinks he killed his wife? No, Witness is the one where he goes and he lives with the Mormons. Uh, It's the one with the bath. Yeah. Yep. Uh, It was another film. Is it not the Amish? It may be the Amish. One or one of one of them. Is it the, it's the Amish? It's where they don't have electricity in that. Yeah, yeah, that's the yeah, Amish. Uh, so that's another film nominated for Best Picture at the Oscars. Right. Next up, he was in the ensemble cast Western Silverado with Kevin Klein, Kevin Costner, uh, and his third film that year, the epic period drama The Color Purple. Remember, he's not been in many films. Clicks this for is... the b- b- clicks for yeah. that film. He stars as the abusive husband of Whoopi Goldberg's main character in that so film. So disturbing, so but disturbing. He is so good in that film. Like, yeah. But he said, like, I, I, he said, I made this film. And then he says, I would go and see my granny. My granny was like 87 at the time. And he says, she was like, 
angry it at took him. a while like it took a while for her to get off how raging she was at him and he's like i'm just acting but the, the but, scenes in that where yeah. he's like separating the women and he's dragging her mm-hmm. it, it's so hard to watch but also you're like oh you're a good actor yeah he's a great oh actor. you're a good actor the film big hit of the box office but was also massively acclaimed by critics also nominated for Best Picture at that year's Academy Awards. Meaning... Also kind of changed the shape of how of African-American storytelling. Yeah. But it meant Danny Glover was in two of the films nominated for Best Picture that year. Yeah. 1987, though, that was Glover's breakout year. It saw the star nominated for an Emmy, first of all, for his portrayal of Nelson Mandela in a TV movie of his life. Glover would then go on to South Africa later later years during its first democratic election mm. to urge people to vote, with Nelson Mandela eventually becoming the first elected president there. The same year, though, also saw a 40, 40 year old Glover make his big giant breakthrough, take on his biggest role ever, starring as the near retirement Sergeant Roger Murta <laughs> opposite Mel Gibson in the buddy cop action film Lethal Weapon. And it's like important to know the biracial buddy cop genre they kind of invented that well see but that, that was a huge thing of that era the thing is i've said other films might have originated the buddy cop genre or cops getting close to retirement or the wild maverick hothead cop no film encapsulated any of them as much as this film did. This cemented these tropes yeah, in Hollywood. But it also subverted the tropes because interestingly, usually when you had a white cop and a black cop, right, the black cop was always the madcap one and the white cop was yeah. usually the staid kind of, oh, like Nick Nolte, oh, I, I'm having to put up with this. Mm-hmm. In this one, he was the very calm, St- straight... Big family man. Family man. Whereas, and Mel Gibson was Mel Gibson. Was Mel Gibson. <laughs> uh, it's still, despite now, Lethal Weapon is nearly 40 years old. I love the TV show. I cannot tell you how much I love the TV show. It's nearly 40 years old. Uh-huh. It still gets referenced constantly. By everybody, anybody, it doesn't matter. If These you films, watch It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, oh, it, it's, it's so heavily referenced all the way in that. It. it doesn't matter what it is. If there's ever a character in a TV show who's too old for something, that's, that's he started that. He started that. I'm getting too old for this. I'm too old for this, Sherbet. Mm hmm. 1998 saw Glover team up with Gene Hackman for the Vietnam drama Bat 21 Mm. uh, before returning for Lethal Weapon 2 the following year, this time adding Joe Pesci to the mix, (laughs) as well as tackling corrupt South African diplomats in a clause which I've found is close to Glover's heart. So it's funny how this is something that he was very much involved with at the time. So they're just like, let's just put it into uh, Lethal Weapon 2. Gave us that line diplomatic immunity oh. and then he shoots Joss Ackland in the head it's like it's been revoked <laughs> yes <laughs> uh, this film even bigger success than the first one so we'll see you in the next one 1989 also saw Glover nominated for another Emmy this time for his superb performance in the epic western miniseries Lonesome Dove mm. that's a massive rating success over there it had the likes of Tommy Lee Jones in it Robert Duvall it was a big mega hit uh, on TV over there at the time 1990 saw Glover try to step into the big shoes of Arnie uh, for the sci-fi action sequel Predator 2 this time taking the alien hunter from the actual jungle to the almost post-apocalyptic future Los Angeles of 1997. I love when films, you know, sit yeah, yeah, yeah. like, it's 1997, Ellie is at the brink. It's like, it's, that was 30 years ago, mate. Right, right, right. Uh, despite getting rave reviews for his own performance, the film wasn't as positively received. Didn't do too well at the box office. However, it has gained a massive cult following in the years that followed. Like, I grew up watching these films. Mm-hmm. These films mean something to me. Yeah. Now reaching his 50s, Glover tried to keep the action career going with the 1990 war film Flight of the Intruder, which is basically Top Gun, but with him and Willem Dafoe. Amazing. Fighting flying fighter jets. Great. 
box office flop. Don't care, what to see it. Yep. Uh, he would also star in the drama Grand Canyon the same year, which was a decent hit with movie goers. I think Alf- Alfred Woodard was his uh, wife in it, Kevin Klein's in it, Steve Martin's in it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, never one to leave money on the table, though Glover turned up in 1992's Lethal Weapon 3, this time Sweet. adding Rene Rousseau, and making almost almost as much as Lethal's 1 and 2 combined. Wow. Because normally the, the the trend is with these sequels, it goes down. Diminishing it's, returns. It's diminishing returns, but you still make money. No, it made more money every single one. Right. However, now in his 50s, Glover would start to transition to those sort of elder statesman roles. He would play the, yes. the baseball manager in Disney's 1994 family film, Angels in the Outfield. I love that film I know so you much. love that film. Uh, whilst they would star for Disney again the next year in the lambasted comedy war film Operation Dumbo Drop. I've just literally seen he was in Operation Dumbo Drop. Yeah. I love Operation <laughs> Dumbo Drop. <laughs> it's so rubbish. It's so good. This film also stars it's really Otta. It's also got which Dennis Leary, the comedian in it. They mm. have to deliver an elephant. Dennis Leary, I- Ray Liotta, Danny Glover. Um, they have to deliver an elephant. They drop it. With with parachutes, it was a weird time of human savior syndrome, where humans were trying to save animals in weird ways. Like yeah, they had Fly Willy. Away Home, where she was like, mm-hmm. learned, she had to be a bird to fly the birds home. Free Willy with a foster there was child that helps one him. With Bill Murray, who was gifted or willed an elephant. Yep. And then Matthew McConaughey trying the yep. It's weird. Uh, 1997 saw Glover play a prominent supporting role in the Matt Damon legal drama The Rainmaker. I love The he Rainmaker. He played the, the judge in that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I also saw him star alongside Joe Pesci in the comedy Gone Fishing. If you've not heard of it, don't worry, nobody did. It was a massive flop, despite costing over $50 million to make. It made like 19 oh bombed at the box office. So, 1998 saw Glover show up uh, as a voice in both the animated films The Prince of Egypt and he was in Ants as well. Okay, but Prince of Egypt's the better of the two. As well as team up with his old pals for Lethal Weapon 4, which despite only being 10 years removed from the first one, everybody was already like, you guys are too long in the tooth for this. He literally was too old for that. Yeah, you are too old for this. That is half the jokes in Lethal Weapon 4 is him going... I'm definitely too old for this. <laughs> and Mel Gibson going, I think I might be as well. <laughs> Audiences Good though, jokes. still showed up for it and I think it had the, the second biggest box office take from the series. Do you think? I think. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but whether it's due to his age or whether it's due to his constant political and civil rights campaigning, he basically goes around the world. He com- campaigns for unions, m- black civil rights... He's in Venezuela, he's in Cuba, he's doing weird things, right? Well, Cuba's he, have an under a change just now. Yeah, but he was in with the the old regime. Oh. Glover has consistently worked over the, the next two decades, but I think his career as a movie star never quite hit the heights. <coughs> it's 10 years or so of mega stardom. He would show up in things like Great Cameo uh, in the Royal Tenenbaums. He was also in an episode of Criminal Minds. He was in Criminal Minds. He was in Dreamgirls. He was in the first Saw film. But is that not what you can... Is that not, like, listen to me, hear me out. Is that not the dream? You do 10 years of solid films where you're going to make massive returns. Yep. And then, for the rest of your life, you get to guest star in cool telly shows. Yep. A shooter. He was in Shooter with Mark Wahlberg. He even turned up in the last Jumanji film. Weird. With Danny DeVito. He seems to have plenty in development at the moment. Lots of straight-to-video films, things like that. But whether one of those will turn out to be the often punted but never produced Lethal Weapon 5 remains to be seen. So here's looking at you, Donald uh, Donald Glover. Jesus, Danny Glover. Donald Glover's a different singer. (laughs) Stroke actor. That's Childish Gambino. He's good as well, though. I have checked. They are not related in any way, shape or form. Oh. So, to tonight's song, mm. and we're going to go back to a film in 2007. It was called Honey Dripper. Oof. And Danny Glover, for the only time he's ever sang, sings on the soundtrack. Uh, he sings this track. It's called Going Down Slow. Fun. Lord, 
Lord, if I don't get well no more. Yes, I done had my fun. If I don't get well no more. If my health fails me now, well, I'll be going down real slow. Somebody write my mother, tell her about the shame I'm in. Somebody write home to my mother. Tell about the lowdown shape I'm in. And tell her to pray for me for forgiveness for all my sins. This is all in my prayers. Mm, don't you worry about me, mother. This is all going down in my prayers. Just say your baby's gone. That was this week's Hollywood swinger Danny Glover with Going Down Slow from Honey Dripper. Here in the Ashley Story Show, we rank our Hollywood swingers on a scale of 1 to 100 Kenny Rogers roasters. Kenny Roger being the original and the best. Paul, I'm going to come to you first. How many Kenny Rogers roasters do you give to Daniel Glover? It's not bad. It's not terrible at all. Uh, I'm going to give it a solid 70. Uh, you can hear that he's got his new wallies in. She's got that wee bit that you sometimes get when you've got the new false teeth in. Yeah. Um, but not bad at all. I'm going to give him a solid 70 for that. You need to know that, like, old saloon piano and old men warbling. You love piano, tinkly piano. I love tinkly piano. 90s tinkly rave piano. And also saloon piano. And saloon piano does it for you. And I really like, like, old men just like... Old boo, men boo, singing. Boo, da, hits. There's a, there's a button in you and that clicks that button. A hundred percent. So that's like a 95 for me. <laughs> that was two of my favourite things. Tinkly piano and old men singing. Um, I loved it. 
95. Get in touch via text 80295. How many Kenny Rogers roasters do you give Danny Glover? You can also email us Ashley Story Show at bbc.co.uk or you can WhatsApp us 08085 92 95 00. Next up is our palate cleanser. It's Loretta Lynn and this haunted house. 